R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett is not scared. He's going to be really good no matter what happens. This kid's got a lot of talent, a lot of hype coming out of high school through Duke in his one year. What is it about you, your game, yeah. what you bring it to the next level that New Yorkers should look forward to? Biggest thing is my confidence. <laughs> I'm built for this. before the draft was really just, it was just madness. You've gone all day, doing interviews all day. You don't know where you're gonna end up. You just gotta wait, be patient, and just try not to think about it. Hi, mommy. Hi, baby, good morning. I'm at the hotel. You in my room? No, I'm in my own room. Oh, don't you, I mean, if you wanted to see me put on the the thing, my suit, you could come to the hotel. I'm about to put my suit on. Okay. All right, when you get here, let me know, okay? All right. Text me your room number again, okay? Okay, I will. Love you. All right, I love you too. Bye. That lady is something else. I just wanted to do something different. I felt like for the draft, you gotta go something that people are gonna remember. I didn't really have to think twice about it. I just saw it and I was good. What is this? <laughs> what is that? That is not here yet. No. Where's the jacket? My mom, she's my superhero. Me personally, I'm a mama's boy. I love hugging on my mama, just being around her all the time. My mom ain't like the pink suit. My mom, she likes the more business approach, but I told her you gotta go extravagant to the draft, but she'll live with it. The New York Knickerbockers select R.J. Barrett from Duke University. Put your hat on, put your hat on, put your hat on. <laughs> Sam, thank you, sir. One of the things I did before I got drafted was go to Steve Nash's soccer showdown. It's my godfather, called him Uncle Steve. He's been there since I was young, so for me to go support his cause was it was great and it was a lot of fun. And you know, I saw some NBA players out there playing soccer, which was funny, so it was cool. Pops, I'm exactly like him, but he always pushed me to get better, and I, I really thank him for it because because of him I'm in this position I'm in today. You know, I'm just very thankful for him being there every day for me. I remember you always waking me up in the morning before school, and I used to hate it, and I didn't understand why I had to do it. I remember when I was younger, it, it would always be like, why, why do I have to do this? You know, none of my other friends are doing it. Nobody else is doing it. Like, everybody's still good at basketball without doing all this stuff. So why do I have to do it? And then You understand now? Yeah, I kind of <laughs> get it more. Yeah, it's good that you were a good kid that you'd listen. I was so mad. You, this is what you would do. You'd come in, you'd, like, turn the light on, then turn it back off and say, let's go. And you'd come back in, he's like, RJ, come on, get up. And then I was like, all right, he's... He's almost there, but I can still sleep a couple more minutes. And then, then you just come in and just rip the whole sheet just right off. Mm -hmm. I was so cold. You just ripped the sheet right off. Oh, yeah. Let's go. And then it was time to go. I just. I... You're in a blessed situation. You've worked for. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, a lot of things have to go right too. You know, yeah. like it's it's not a given, and you can't let anything or anyone, you know, step in front of your path. You're moving into a very, very exclusive club. You know, you thought about what you might feel like. I mean, you've never. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. I just think I'm. I think at the moment. I think right now I'm not nervous. After I won't be nervous. I feel like walking across the stage, to be honest, I just don't want to trip. Fall. <laughs> I think that's everybody's fear. But once I'm on the stage and I shake his hand, I got my hat on, I'll be I'll just be really excited. I'm gonna get I'm gonna probably gonna get emotional and like backstage a little bit after. Because mm -hmm. I'm gonna everything's gonna kinda hit me at once. Yeah. So like we can talk about it all all day. We yeah. can do all the interviews, we can do whatever, but mm -hmm. You don't really know how to feel until you're in the moment, so. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see you walk across that stage tomorrow. Appreciate that. Love you, man. Love you too, Dad. When I woke up on draft day, I actually wasn't excited because if I got too excited and was thinking about it, that would have been the longest day ever. So, you know, I kind of just had to just, you know, be calm and just, Go about my day, relax. This is the real pose. Let me just... Okay, get that. If <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that, you, you oh better get that. Oh my goodness, you have to get that. What do you want? If, if, you, if you're watching TV, it's. With the foot rotating too. Oh, uh, I don't know what that is. It was raining on draft day. I absolutely hate rain. I had my nice pink suit on, I had to walk in the rain. I was not happy about that, but you know, I was getting drafted, so I put everything in perspective. Once I got off the bus and got to the arena, that's when, that's when I started to get excited. Some guys were nervous, some guys were, you know, making jokes. It's just everybody knows that, you know, this is about to change our lives, this is about to be our future. When the first pick was made, I think that was the most emotional part of the night for me because I got to see, you know, one of my closest friends get drafted and, and live out his dream. And I was just, I was so happy for him because we'd be in the, in the room many nights, you know, talking about how we can't wait to make it to the NBA and how we've been working so hard for this dream. And to, to see him, to see him go number one, man, I just, I don't know, I, I, was just a, I was just a proud brother in that moment. And then number two came, and you know, my other friend Ja went, so I was happy for him too. And then the next round of clock, and I don't know, I'm not, I was kind of nervous. I just, I just wanted to get it over with. I wanted to see what would happen. With the third pick in the 2019 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select R.J. Barrett from Toronto and Duke University. I walked across the stage, shook the commissioner's hand. I was, at that point, I was just really trying to live in the moment. So I was just really excited. I had the hat on, just going through everything. And then once I started doing the interview with Maria Taylor, I just kind of, you know, just started to think like, wow, like I made it. And then I was going to be fine with the rest of the interview, but my dad had to come over and make me all emotional. So yeah, when, when my dad came over, it kind of hit me and it just all kind of came out. You have to be proud. Very proud. I'm proud of you, son. Quand t'as entendu ton nom être prononcé par Adam Silver, quelle était vraiment la, la première pensée que t'as eu de savoir ouais. que t'allais vraiment au Knicks, comme tu m'avais dit que ouais. tu voulais, que, que tu souhaitais en fait euh, euh, donc poursuivre ta carrière de ce côté? Ouais. J'étais très excité. Je, je suis finalement dans la NBA et j'ai pleuré beaucoup. Mes parents ont pleuré beaucoup, mais je suis très content d'être ici. That was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> After everything was done, went back to the hotel. I had all my family from, you know, my American family, Canadian family, you know, close friends. It was just great to see everybody there. I even gave a nice speech. So everything, everything was great. There was a lot of dancing, a lot of joy. So it was fun. I'm not going to talk to you here at all, but just, uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who came out. Just 
to look around the room, there's so many people you know, gathered here to support me, and that, that means a lot. Um, I know when I walked on the stage, I got the hat, my dad came over, and I just started to cry. I felt like 19 years of just hard work and sacrifice, you know, all came out of me at once. So um, for you to all be here on this very special night, I just want to say I love you, and I'm very thankful for everybody here. Next on, made different. First day as a Nick, I woke up and the first thing I said to my friends was, yo, I'm a Nick. Like, that was still crazy to me. Uh, RJ, uh, do you have big enough shoulders to carry this franchise? First question as a, as a Nick at the press conference, that's, that's what I get. All these emotional moments that I'm having is just because, I mean, I'm, I'm just happy. Like, this is my dream.